If it matters to you, it matters to us. Call Tip Today on 1-800-938-007. Welcome back to Tip Today, live from Pier Street in Nina, and delighted to be joined in the studio by our GP, Dr. Pat Harrell. Good morning to you, Pat. Good morning, Frank. Your microphone is falling apart on you already. <laughs> as long as that's the only thing falling apart. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, indeed. Much too much information on all of that. We, we, we were... In... Whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay. Sorry, that's, that's a bit that's hider. It's got a little bit of uh, feedback there, but you're, you're grand now. Um, yeah, you're going to talk to us today about cholesterol. And, yeah. yeah. Um, cholesterol, you know, there's... Uh, when you're born, your cholesterol is um, very low. Yeah. And um, there was... I, I get most of my information about cholesterol from a, 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 what's called a, a lifestyle cardiologist called Paddy Barrett. Now, this is a new thing coming in. We all know our, our cardiologists who, you know, put in stints and, you know, when you run into trouble, they fix you. Mm. But now there's a whole new um, breed of cardiologists called lifestyle cardiologists oh. who hope that you don't run into trouble in the first place. So when we take your cholesterol, um, we look at five different things. OK, one is your total cholesterol. Mm-hmm. Now, it could be four, five, six, seven, you know, we we don't get as excited about it because then we look at the breakdown. And the next thing you look at is the HDL, which is high density uh, cholesterol. Now, you'd imagine that would be worse than, but it's not. It's actually a good one. It's protective. Mm-hmm. So it's like, um, do you remember in the old uh, lawnmowers and things, you used to have a little bit of oil that was kind of protective. Yes. You want a high HDL. So if your HDL is high, we're, we're kind of happy. Um, then you look at LDL, and that's, um, we used to call that the bad cholesterol. Now, it, it's not a bad way of thinking about it, actually. Your LDL is the one, when you're born, it's about 0.8, which is low. Most people for an hour age, it's probably up 2.83, something like that. And that's the one that gets sticky and sticks to your arteries. And uh, that's the one you want to keep an eye on. Mm-hmm. Now, and then there's triglycerides, and that gives you a fair old indication of your diet. So if your okay. triglycerides are high, you're probably eating garbage. Now, at least 50% of your cholesterol is made in your liver um, when, you're, when you're asleep. And um, your brain actually can make its own cholesterol. Did you know that? Go on. No, yeah, it does. It makes its own specific type of one. Now, the, the thing about cholesterol is if, you, if it's a bit high and you can take something to kind of suck it out of it and bring it down, grand. Um, a lifestyle can do an awful lot. But in some people... There's, um, they just tend to have a high cholesterol and that's when you have to go on something. Mm. And there's there's three or four different families, but the most common one is a thing called a statin. Mm. And statins get a lot of bad press. An awful lot of bad press and it's one of the reasons why we wanted you to talk about this today. Yeah. yeah. Well, well, the first myth about it is that it would give you Alzheimer's. Yes. No, it doesn't give you Alzheimer's. That's been really well looked at and it doesn't. And in fact, a study in Hong Kong showed that it actually reduces the incidence of that Alzheimer's by about well, different types of dementia in around 20%. Because when you think about it, if your brain is kind of clogging up and the blood flow is getting kind of sluggish and yeah. black and stuff like that laying down, so they don't give you Alzheimer's statins. And the second thing about them is they give you aches and pains. Now, 90% of the time, they don't give you any aches and pains whatsoever. But, you know, most of us have a few aches and pains. And anybody, so you think, Jesus, that's the statin. It you know. must be the statin. Well, but <laughs> I, I see people yes. who have had heart attacks. They end up going to hospital. They come out. They're on top of the list. Full blast, 80 milligrams of atorvastatin or something like that. And they come out. And you say to them about three or four months later, you know, you're on a statin. They don't even know they're on it. And they, they say, oh. And they've no... But because they didn't start to link the aches and pains with it. Now, anybody I start in a statin, I also tell, take um, a thing called coenzyme Q10, which is kind of food for muscles, which can be very helpful. Um, right. It's not in the medical So card, you take that alongside. It's, it's a, it's a the, supplement. The and if you, you generally should take the statin at night time because that's when you make it. But right. that's not essential. There's also a thing called azotembine and azotembine stops you absorbing it at all in your tummy. That'll bring it down by about 20%. But... You know, people say, I'm on a statin for life. You're on a statin until the next thing comes along. Because now they have um, a thing that's... Uh, there's various types of injections. Now, this is for people who are seriously um, fatty blood. Mm. You could be thin as a rake in a fat blood. Yes. You, yes. Could be, you could be massive. You could look like giant haystacks and you could be... Um, you, you could have lovely low cholesterol and vice versa. You know, you could... So a genetic... Oh, a obviously. genetic is huge yeah. in it, Fran. It's absolutely few. Now, seeing as you've got on genetics, about 20% of people um, have very high 
cholesterol, like it comes in at 7, 8. Then we do a test called, it's for a thing called lipoprotein A. And some people just have a genetic, um, doesn't matter what they do, they just have very fatty blood, right. about a fifth. But most people don't fall into that category. But um, statins are no... And problem. what exactly does the statin do for the cholesterol? It stops the liver making it. Oh, I see. The, the, um, it's, it's, well, I it, thought it diluted it in some way. No, it's, no. it stops you making it. Ah. So it kind of, it works in receptors and they make it think that it's made enough. But we need an element of cholesterol. Oh, you do. Yes. Oh, you do. You need so a bit. it doesn't stop all cholesterol, no, does it? No, okay. you need you need it. But you, uh, like, remember when I said the babies, when they're born, is not point yes. You can get by in very little. Okay. And I said, yeah, something like the brain is and won't be starved of cholesterol because you're taking a statin. Right. It, it can make its own. So outside of the genetic element then, Pat, is a diet? Oh, diet's big. Yes. Diet's big. And um, not just for cholesterol and lipids and things. Diet's big for all the things that we don't get. You know, things like folic acid. I mean, the amount of people who are low in folic acid, which is green leafy vegetables and things like that. If we test nearly everybody's low on that, I usually come in here and say everyone's low on vitamin D. Now I go, to, <laughs> by the way, I'm all in favour of not changing the clocks. I heard a bit about that this morning. Big debate around that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. Um, I, I thought they were going to stop that this year or something, but they, yeah, I they think kicked it down the road. Some carry on in Europe. Yeah. Um, but uh, it would be, in the, in the winter, you just need to get your bit of sunshine in your face, or your, yeah. you know. But anyway, I get back to the statins. <laughs> so, um, so look, the, the, the biodiversity, statins are safe. Right. They are safe. And on, there's other things coming along. There's actually a gene program thing coming out that you actually get one shot. It's like a vaccine and that'll take care of your high cholesterol for the rest of your life. That is coming well, down the tracks. Be and there's also a thing, there's there's things you can get an injection every six months, every three months. There's different kind of things coming in that you don't have to keep taking the tablet all the time. But until they're mainstream and worked out more, the statins are grand. If I was told I was going to the statin tomorrow, I wouldn't care. W- wouldn't bother you. No. Why, why do you think it's attracting such conspiracy theories and uh, such bad press? I don't know. Right. And I, I really don't because, um, you know, it's, it's all the way you look at it, you know, especially yeah. like a lot of people come in and you say, look, you've got bad blood, high blood pressure. Yeah. Now, you know, you can look at it two ways. You can look at it like, Jesus Christ, this is terrible, you know, and um, or you can start to think, well, even 50 years ago, there wasn't anything like the treatments now. You've got some, you just went on until you dropped dead or had a heart attack yeah. or a stroke yeah. or something. Now you can bring it down. The, the things are there. They're available. Um, and, um, you know, you can just look in the positives. Right. And and again, just, just for my own information, cholesterol then, it is, is it the cause of heart attack and stroke or can it be a cause of heart it's, attack? It's a cause. It's okay. a cause. But what happens is there's plaques in your arteries. Your arteries, the blood is whooshing through. If you sort of imagine any kind of a pipe and it can get um, build up and the build-up is on the, around the walls of it. And if they form a plaque and something gets stuck, that's when the blood supply is cut off to your heart, and that's when you have your heart attack. So there's a few ways we can look at it. Um, they used to start to do an awful lot of um, angiography, yes. you know, inject in, die, and look at it. Yeah. The calcium scores are very good, and you can do a cardiac. Um, there's cardiac tests that you don't actually have to be injected with anything mm. and they can see it and your calcium score is a very way, good way of ch- checking if your arteries are fog- foreign up or anything like that you know so it's um, and they see where you come mm. Alright, a uh, question in for you it's not related really to what we're talking about but what does Pat think of the carnivore diet, the notion of steak and eggs every day um, I don't know too much about it yeah. right? but I, I don't think people are designed to eat meat. I mean, we don't have the At teeth. All. We don't have the teeth of a meat eater. You know, we can't digest raw meat. We're not. Um, we are genetically. Um, you and I, Fran, are ninety eight percent exactly the same as a chimpanzee, who only and we're about ninety seven percent the same as a gorilla or something like that, or an orangutan, and they are. Um, they're, they are vegetarians, mm. and I'd be far more into it. Uh, there is great evidence that a plant based diet reduces all kinds of statins, heart attacks, strokes, things like that. A plant-based diet is the way to go. Now, um, if you did go on a carnivore diet, meat, eggs, things like that, um, you know, we're saying 50, maybe as high, about 50% lifestyle, you will have a lot of fats in your blood and things like that. Um, Especially cooked meats. Cooked meats are full of all kinds of things, nitrates and things like bad news. Right, so, so salami, doing... pepperoni, stuff right, like that. Yeah. But quite apart from illness, a carnivore diet 
I mean, if everybody went on that, the planet wouldn't sustain it. Mm. You know, I mean, genetically and evolutionary, we are hunter-gatherers, and if we got meat, you know, we'd come, we'd hate upon a dead monkey in the forest or something, and that would probably do us for a fortnight. Yeah. So, um, I don't actually know it, but, uh, too much about it, but I really wouldn't um, think that it's we're built for it. It's yeah, like yeah, putting yeah. jet fuel into a lawnmower. Like yeah, I think it's Jordan Peterson that has sort of brought this to the public's attention now, because he eats nothing, only beef, I think, every single Isn't day. Isn't he one of those macho populists? Well, he's, a, he's a, yes. Yeah, he's sort a, of right-wing... One, one of those. Yeah. Yeah, not, not the sort of person very influential. Going, not the sort of person I'd be going to for dietary no, advice. I, <laughs> I mean, if you are looking for advice, just look and see what qualifications they have. And he doesn't, look, I'm not qualified in dietics or nutrition or something like yeah. that. But look at Paddy Barrett and see what he has to say. Uh, Dr. Paddy Barrett, and I, I, I don't know him, but I'm giving him a great plug here. But um, he's got a good book out called Your Heart health yeah. and he's got blogs and Instagram and all kinds of things like that and you can look and see and you'll see the breakdown and the studies and the things like that but Jesus we're not designed to live in steak do you think? Ah, oh, we're not steak, Jesus yeah. I love it I have to say but there you go um, somebody got the flu injection on Tuesday very tired sore limbs will you ask Pat is that normal Suzanne? Um, not really uh, the flu I mean every every injection <laughs> Every medicine has its drawbacks and side effects and everything like that. The flu injection was one I have, God knows how many I've given out down the years, you know, and um, I, you, you don't, a sore arm is about the height of it. Mm. No, I'm not saying it's not caused by it, you know, mm. you, I, I don't know. Quite often when that happens, you're picking up something else or there's another reason. But I, would, um, I wouldn't attribute it. To yeah. the flu injection. Might be, but it's unlikely. Is there a big run on the uh, flu injection this year? Um, it's out, and it's yeah. and actually my pal Michael Leo asked me to mention it this morning that it's there. He's a great advocate of it. Mm. Um, old, old, I'm not calling them old, but um, people in Nina are very good for picking up the flu injection. Okay. Um, it used to be sort of a perk with the job. If you worked in the aluminium factory or somewhere, oh, they'd bring right. you in and they'd yeah. give you the flu jab and you're... Everybody was delighted with this winter proofed, um, and we're 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 giving it out left, right, and centre at the moment. And if you can get the pneumococcal injection when you're with it, that pneumococcal injection is a great thing. It protects you against twenty three different types of pneumonia. Wow. And if you're, it, you generally only need one shot, and you're covered. Yeah, so well, it's not something you get every year. What about the COVID one? Is there a lot of call for that? There is a lot of call. I is got it? I got a thing on my phone there to go for it, um, and um, I'd be rocking up for it this week. Yeah. Okay. And is that available from your practice, or is that? It's, it's, we don't actually do it anymore. Yeah. We did loads of it. Um, we just didn't really have room in the fridge, to be honest. So, yeah. um, I send most of them down the town to the, to the chemist. Yeah, very good. Indeed. Most of the chemists do it. Yeah. And, and because I know that uh, traditionally we look to Australia to discover what kind of flu we can expect um, uh, this year, is there anything sort of odd out there? Is there a particularly bad flu that we can expect or anything like that? I don't know. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't look it I don't up, know. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure somebody will tell us. <laughs> you don't get overexcited. It won't, about it, it won't be me. <laughs> Very Not good this indeed. time, anyway. Do you know what I was thinking when you spoke about the liver and how that, uh, that's where the cholesterol is created? But the liver is a great man, isn't it, when you think about it? Isn't it an amazing organ? Ah, yeah. With, with all it does. I remember a fellow who was very fond of drink said to me, wasn't God an awful idiot? He says he gave us only one liver and two kidneys. Because <laughs> <laughs> he was working his way through his liver. You know, but, uh, Spoken by a true drinker. Yeah. Um, the liver is an amazing organ. Yeah, it, it does. Yeah. It clears off everything and it makes yeah. it makes loads of stuff. And, it's, um, it's, and um, you know, it does need to be treated with respect. I, I don't think you get the same level of heavy drinking we used to see. You know, I think yeah. drinking is becoming sort of a thing of the past, really. Isn't that strange? Yeah. But at the levels you see fibrosis just, yeah. and cirrhosis. Well, when and all you that. see uh, Guinness uh, investing so much money, I heard the, this morning thirty million or something into into the zero zero Guinness because there's such call for it now. It's uh, the sales increasing by forty something percent over the last year. Go on. I thought problem? that was a kind of a marketing ploy that they could have the ads going all day. I, and all I thought so as well, but seemingly not. Seemingly people are drinking zero zero Guinness. Yeah. Just goes to join. Yeah. There you so go. much for the parties. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Great to see you, Pat, as always. Okay, Thanks. take care, Pat. Very much. Have a nice We're weekend. live from Nina today, and news and information is on the way. 
Tip today with Fran Curry. With Slattery's Garage, puck on. You can't beat experience. With over 50 years maintaining Peugeot cars and vans, we like to call ourselves the experts. Call Slattery's Garage for a free vehicle health check today. 067 24111 or slatterysgarage.ie. Mirror.